Hi, I've got a new perfume haul for you. There are some perfumes that I just ordered and then also ones that I received in PR. So let's start. We will start with the one that I got in PR, which is brand new. And I don't feel like there are any or at least not loads of reviews on online. So this is Clive Christian's new perfume called Cashmere Musk. It's from their private collection. And this is my first Clive Christian perfume. I have smelled a lot of them already and they have a specific DNA, which is very, to me, classic. And um, most of the time, quite unisex leaning and I like it. The bottles and the design and everything, the packaging is stunning. I love this royal design of the bottles. I also love the rich color of the bottle, but what does it smell like? I sprayed it on my hand yesterday uh, on my hand and then in the evening also on my husband's hand. And it is a beautiful unisex offering, in my opinion. It says online that it is a floral, fruity, green scent. But on us, it wasn't that fruity or very floral. To me, it is very airy, reminding me of Molecule perfumes, like Molecule 01, 02, very airy quite dry perfumes as well so something like another 13 but then there is this blood orange that is in the top but i do get it from time to time so it is quite a simple perfume that gets complex because you smell certain notes from time to time and they are a surprise uh, to you once you wear it it is very smooth and very well-rounded. And there is a note of guayac wood in here, which I do get. And to me, guayac wood is a very challenging note, or it can be, because it has this slightly smoky effect to it. There is a perfume, I think it is Molecule 01 or 02 plus guayac wood. And that one is too barbecue smoky to me in here it just gives it some depth and some more edge and I'm so excited to have it in my or our collection and I'm interested to see who's gonna wear it more often now on to the perfumes that I ordered and they are all spring and summer perfumes because I'm just in the mood and I told you that this year I want to discover more Middle Eastern brands, but I also want to discover more designer brands as well because they have some very nice offerings. There are just so many that it's sometimes quite hard to differentiate from each other, especially when it comes to flankers of a very large collection. But when I was in Spain, I got a sample of Prada Paradox Intense and I have the original at home. It is quite a generic smelling fruity floral perfume to me that I don't really reach for. And so when I got the sample, I wasn't too excited, but I tried it anyway and I fell in love. I tried it on a paper test strip and I laid that test strip down on a sideboard, walked out, walked in and I was like, what is in here? Because I tested a lot of perfumes that evening, but I was shocked because it was a very intense, creamy, floral quite fruity smell and then I went through all of the test strips and it was this. So this in my opinion to me and on me is so much nicer than the original. This reminds me a lot of my beloved Carolina Herrera Good Girl Blush. It also has something about Hibiscus Mahajad by Maison Crivelli or Mont Blanc Signature, those creamy sweet vanilla -y florals it's 
so beautiful and it was my scent of the day yesterday and this has a monster performance for a spring and summer type of scent this is going to last you the whole day so it is sweet and floral and fruity it has notes of pear which you definitely get and oranges bitter oranges bergamot it's so juicy and fruity in the top and then it's interesting because it only has neroli and jasmine listed as florals but to me it is very creamy and floral almost like ylang ylang or my beloved peony something like that and then there is a moss note in there and when i wore it yesterday my husband smelled it on me and he was like ah oh, is this a unisex offering and i think he smelled the moss but also the molecules because in the base it has quite a lot of molecules like ambro fix but especially vanilla and this to me is a very creamy warm sweet vanilla scent with juicy fruits and some creamy florals it's so nice easy going it's quite intense as the name suggests and i love those bottles and i'm so excited to have it in my collection then i ordered a new tom ford perfume which is called Soleil neige new to me i mean i think I've, i haven't smelled this one before but when i looked up the notes i was like i feel like i'm gonna like it I don't know why I thought of spring when I read Soleil Neige, but either way, I love this perfume. It was love at first sight, no, first sniff, first sniff, and I think I'm gonna wear it today. This is so beautiful. So it has the accords of floral, creamy, sweet and fresh and powdery. And I would say it smells exactly like that it's floral it's creamy it's sweet it has this snowy white creaminess to it and then some slight powdery vibes but in the most elegant timeless way it doesn't smell mature but it is elegant but it's fresh and creamy enough so that i could see myself wear it every single day it's definitely a signature scent type of perfume because it doesn't lean in any direction and it's so smooth so creamy i'm shocked because i tell you a lot that tom ford perfumes a lot of times have something missing for me a lot of times it's too this or not enough that or the performance isn't good or it's too strong or not smooth enough and this one has it all basically um it's not the longest lasting like a lot of tom ford perfumes but if you overspray i could see this being quite long lasting or enough for me at least but this is such a unique perfume that to me still is mass appealing and that is very hard to get right so this has notes of bergamot and carrot seeds in the top and i can get both of those notes it's so refreshing but then it gets super creamy in the heart it has jasmine rose orange blossom and i definitely get beautiful florals that aren't too white floral smelling or too mature as i said and then the base is so nice. You can smell the benzoin, the labdanum. It has this resiny touch. There's some vanilla in here, definitely. And some musk to keep it light and airy. And oh my god, it's so, so nice. I'm so excited to have this in my collection. I just got a travel size of it. And I'm interested to see how much I will wear this. And if I'm going to get a full bottle of it then i got this perfume which is so under the radar and i think i saw it on another youtube channel i'm not too sure what her name is but i will link her channel um, in the description box i like her channel a lot and we like a lot of um the same perfumes and she did a video on underrated perfumes or perfume gems and she 
talked about this and I've never heard something about this perfume. So this is Chloé L'eau de Parfum Lumineuse and it's quite new. It was released last year and I haven't heard anybody talk about this perfume other than her, but it is such a beautiful perfume. When she described it, I was like, I'm quite sure I will like it. And I wore it yesterday on my hand to see how I like it. And it's so nice. So this has the main accords of sweet and floral and fruity and fresh. And it has just a couple of notes. It has amber, jasmine, rose, balsamic notes and vanilla, but it is so much more to me. It's definitely fruity. And it even says the main accords are fruity, but there are no fruits listed. To me, it is mainly a fruity scent, so very sweet, but then you have those elegant florals, the jasmine and the rose, toning it down, making it a little bit more elegant. And the amber and the vanilla and also the balsamic notes make it definitely very sweet and very creamy. So you have to like sweet, creamy and fruity scents to enjoy it. But as I said, the florals make it not juvenile smelling, but it's definitely a happy, fun, easygoing scent. I wouldn't say it smells a lot like the original Chloe, but... If you like Chloe, you will definitely love this as well. I love the original Chloe. It reminds me a lot of Delina La Rose. So I was quite sure that I will enjoy it. I adore this bottle and also like the bow and everything. It's so beautiful. I love those uh, glass bottles as well. And yeah, it's such an easy reach. Um, and it was okay when it comes to lasting power it's not as intense as the prada one definitely not but i had it on from morning to i would say early afternoon and then after that it was quite a skin scent but still i think if i overspray it will be a perfect spring and summer scent i'm so excited to wear it some time ago i went to a perfumery and smelled all Valentino perfumes, especially the Donna range and the Born in Roma range. It is so confusing to me, like why don't you do a new collection, but it's like Valentino, Donna, and then it's Born in Roma, and then I have so many flankers, but I tested a lot of them and I liked most of them, which was quite shocking to me because a long time I did not smell them because I think all of them are jasmine based and a lot of times I don't enjoy jasmine based scents but as I said I like most of them and I remembered liking the coral one but it was in fall winter time and so I didn't pick it up I didn't think about it anymore and now that I'm in my spring mood I thought about it again and so I got it and this is such a cute bottle. I also love their bottles. Um, they're quite intense but I like it and this is such a nice scent. I would say if you like L'Imperatrice by Dolce & Gabbana or you wanted to like it, something is maybe a little bit too harsh, too not smooth enough, give this a try. This has the main accords of fruity, sweet, floral and fresh with notes of golden kiwi and I love golden kiwis. Brazilian orange in the heart you have rose and jasmine and in the base you have ambrette and white musk. And to me, oh, it smells so good. It's such a happy scent to me. It's super fruity. It smells exactly like a fruity kids shampoo in the best way possible it is perfumey it is musky but it's a airy musk that just makes this perfume again not smell as juvenile as it could be but it's not the dusty musk that you find in a lot of potent fruity scents because that musk I do not enjoy on my skin. In here, however, it's very toned down. It's very airy, as I said. But this juicy kiwi together with the orange is such a beautiful combination. And the rose and the jasmine are so 
beautifully intertwined with all of these other notes, making it just smell like a happy fruity floral scent. And it's the perfect in between of being an adult, but also having your inner child in you still. And I'm very happy to wear this. I'm not too sure how much I will wear it in spring, but I feel like this is going to be one of my staple summer scents. I'm very interested to see how the performance is with this one. Then we have two perfumes that I got in PR. The first one is Smoking Hot by Killian. And this is actually my first Killian perfume that I got. And I love the bottles. They are so mysterious looking. I love what they did. And this perfume is very interesting. I'm gonna spray it on a test strip. This has the main accords of sweet, smoky and fruity. And there is apple in here, there's shisha, tobacco in here, cinnamon, oak moss, vanilla. And you can smell all of those notes. And together it smells exactly like as if you are in a outdoor shisha bar, someone smoking a shisha pipe with some apple tobacco in there and you can smell the whiffs in the air. It's very airy. It's not a very heavy scent, which I like that they did it like that. They still kept it quite fresh and airy, but you still get the smoky woodiness and the spices and the fruits. And if you like that scent, this will be your new best friend. Also on my skin, the longevity is very, very good. And then we have Le Papier by Diptyque. This is also a last year's release and it was quite hyped up, I would say, especially for a Diptyque perfume. And I smelled it in store and I thought, mm, that smells nice and walked away. <laughs> And then I smelled it again on a sample and I was like, mm, that smells quite good. And then I received it. I'm so happy about it. First of all, I adore those bottles. I think Diptyque makes some of the most gorgeous perfume bottles. But this scent is so Diptyque yet so fitting into the collection, meaning it's innovative enough to have a new perfume, but it just has this elegant, a little bit powdery diptyque DNA that is very typical for them. So this has the main accords of creamy, woody and fresh with notes of rice steam, musk, blonde woods, roasted sesame and mimosa. And this is quite a simple scent. It's very powdery to me. Powdery here is the last accord, but to me it's mostly like a fresh powder with some, as it says, rice steam. It's not very nutty. It doesn't smell like actual rice. It's just this rice steam. It's very light and airy and it's definitely quite musky. And I think the sesame and the mimosa just give it something extra so that it's not just fresh and powdery, if you know what I mean. It reminds me of Glossier You or also Sonic Flower, but more approachable. I feel like this is one that I gravitate towards more. It's more easy to me. It's a lot more light, but in comparison to Glossier U, the performance is so much better. And I got this maybe like two weeks ago. And since then it has been living on my office desk and I have been spraying it every time. I'm like, mm, I cannot really smell myself anymore. Let's have some fresh perfume. And then I just spray it. And every time I'm like, yeah, that's nice. I crave it. It's something you don't really have to think about yet you still smell very different and just beautiful. So these were all of my new additions to my perfume collection. Let me know if you want a in-depth review of any of them and I will see you in my next video. Bye.